Hey, what's up, sweaties? You're watching the Collider Heroes. I'm John Schnepp. We're going to get into it right away. We've got some special guests who are going to get extra sweaty with me. Right over here, we got John Roca. Hey, hey, first appearance on Roca. Heroes. Hey, everybody. Popping my cherry on this particular episode. That's I'm so right. happy to be on, and uh, I've been looking forward to coming on Collider Heroes. So let's talk all this stuff. Happy to have you, John Thank Campia. You, John. Hey, how you doing, guys? Good to be back. And Jeremy Johns. With my headphones, listening to Cherry Popping Daddies. <laughs> John <laughs> Roca. <laughs> That's right. Well, before we get right into the, the, the very first news, I wanted to show some of this more incredible fan art comes in every week. And this is from Art Miramontes. Now, check that wow. out. It's just like next level type stuff. Wow. Um, if I was kind of joking about doing a comic book for The Colliders, it's getting more real the more you guys <laughs> send in this kind of stuff. So uh, in the next couple of weeks... Uh, Stay tuned. I'm going to make an announcement. There might be some flavor coming to you at San Diego Comic-Con nice. in the form of a little tasty nugget called a comic book. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm not making any promises, even though that just sounded like a promise. I reserve the right <laughs> to totally and fully retract it. Um, guess what? If you're watching this live right now, start formulating some cool questions. I'm going to pick about five or six live questions once we get into the Twitter area. But right now, let's talk about some of the subjects. Number one, a new direction for Marvel is coming after Avengers. Lots of Marvel. Marvel news this week with the big announcement that the Avengers 3 and 4 are no longer shooting back to back, as well as Kevin Feige hinting at even bigger changes that are coming on the horizon. He said the next phase may not even be called phase four. We were like, what? No phase? With Zoe Saldana just a couple days ago calling the fourth film, the fourth Avengers film, Gauntlet or whatever its code name is, how connected will the two films actually be? What do you think about the split in filming the Avengers 3 and 4 and the future of the MCU? Let's start off with you, Jeremy. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I feel like if it's Infinity War that leads into Gauntlet, I feel like they're going to be at least that connected if right. Gauntlet's talking about the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. She was probably just word vomiting. It's probably like if you know, on, on Star Wars, they were like, Blue Harvest, the, you know, right. it's, 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 they all have their code words as right. they're, they're filming stuff. Although that's the worst code ever. It's like, all right, we're going to film. Marvel Studios has a movie called Gauntlet. People know what that is, you know. <laughs> uh, I imagine they're going to be connected. I find it interesting that they're like, all right, new direction coming after Phase 4. But also, it's a good move. I mean, you can't just do the same thing over and over and over again. Anyone who watched any incredible amount of television shows that went past about season three after season three they're like hey we're gonna gonna flip the show on its head because we have to and it's usually an interesting thing that happens so i'm looking forward to seeing what they do with it so hey good move interesting move i look forward to seeing what they're doing it's probably not called gauntlet john what are your thoughts well yeah i mean clearly gauntlet is a is just the, the phrase like most movies have a phrase that the actors refer to it by the movie is years and years and years away i would not be surprised at all right now if they didn't even if marvel itself didn't even really have a lockdown on what the title was. Now, Kevin Feige said in a comment recently, like, if we said what the name of the fourth movie is going to be, it would be a spoiler. Um, so they clearly they have an idea, right. but I bet they don't even have a lockdown now. So I would pay no attention to the fact that she referenced it as something. Mm -hmm. At Blue Harvest, everybody, does that right. ring a bell? So yeah. not really a big deal. It is really interesting to see how more and more separate Avengers 3 and Avengers 4 have been becoming over mm -hmm. the past five, six, seven months. Right. That more like Because remember, it wasn't that long ago. Not only these two movies shooting back to back, they were shooting together. Like yeah. one day they're going to be shooting a scene from one movie. The next day they'd be shooting a scene for the next movie and alternating. It was going to be like that interconnected. They've separated it more and more. And which is fine because they were still... What are we? Three years away from Avengers Four? Yeah. At this point, three. So when you're that far in advance, you can alter your plan a little bit, figure it out. But I just think it means that they've got a very clear picture of what they're doing. It's coming more and more into focus for them, and I think it also means that those movies that are going to come out in between Avengers Three and Avengers Four are probably going to play more of a significant mm. role in what ends up being in Avengers Four rather than just Avengers Three being the only significant thing for Avengers Four. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. What do you think, John? Yeah, I think this is, I mean, you make great points, John, I, and I absolutely agree with what everyone's been saying so far. I think this, they're going to be connected. Just because mm -hmm. they're separated by a, lo a number of years doesn't mean they're not still going to be connected in a lot of ways. Plus, you've got these these actors who are coming to the end of their contracts, right? This idea that how much more can we pay them? How much? I mean, I'm sure Robert Downey Jr. keeps asking for more and more because he already started at such a high rate right. and was really essential in creating this whole universe. It's really important, Downey Jr., what he did with Iron Man. So these, and then these new characters coming in, John makes a great point. 
point, like these new characters coming in. I love this idea that we may come to a place where movies are just like the comics, where the old Avengers kind of move away and then there's a new Avengers team and we jump onto it. Mm -hmm. I am so happy about this because just a year ago, everyone was going nuts about superhero fatigue and all this kind of right. stuff. And you don't understand this genre can expand in so many ways. And we're seeing this could be a possible example of that happening as well. And I think it's also smart because you, you put a separation between the time and also technology. You can take advantage of more technology. Yeah. We saw already with, with, with Grandma of Tarkin, mm. that was as close as we've come to, to right. like, we saw the debacle of Final Fantasy. Look how far they've come, right. you know, so there could be even more coming down the road. So to me, it's all smart to separate it out. I don't think anything that Zoe said should be held as like, oh my God, this is it. Because Feige was really clear that that, it, that it's going to be a spoiler. That's why he didn't want to reveal the title. Right. And a year ago, he said it would be a combination of choosing which characters to continue on with and explore and which to bring in. So they've already had this thought for quite some time. And, it, and if it was, if the name, let, let's say, I've had people tweeting me saying, oh my gosh, Zoe slipped the name of the You're movie. Right. I bet Zoe doesn't even know the name of the You're movie. Right. Right. One. <laughs> but beyond that, if Kevin Feige is saying the name of the movie would be a spoiler, guess what we've already seen in the, in the Marvel movies? The Gauntlet. Right, We've already right, seen right. it. I yeah, mean, yeah. so them calling it would be a not not a spoiler yeah. in any way, shape, or form. Unless it's yeah. a different gauntlet. Oh, yeah. what? <laughs> what? It's the other gauntlet. Yeah, um, I agree. And you know, I'm going to call everybody by their last names because there's John, 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 John and Johns. Johns. <laughs> so we're all going to be like. So it's Roka, Campy, Schnepp, and Jeremy. Yeah. And Jeremy. And Jeremy. The cheese stands That's alone. That's right. Thing. So you know what? So we got two movies, two separate movies. A lot of people are saying, is Thanos going to be in the, the fourth Avengers movie or is Thanos going to be wrapped up in this morning on movie talk we kind of started playing around with the possible yeah. who could possibly be if it's not thanos mm. who's the villain of avengers 4 right. and i said i think it's going to be kang wow. number one because we're dealing with the infinity gauntlet and if if you, any of the sweaties out there have actually read any of the infinity gauntlet or the countless other infinity whatevers you know right. infinity invasion all these different uh, infinity things where they have adam warlock they have nebula all these different people have all worn the gauntlet at right. different points and altered time and space and everything so um we know that marvel likes to pick little parts and pieces from some of the greatest things like we're getting thor ragnarok but that's mm -hmm. got parts of planet hulk that's got mm -hmm. parts of secret wars that's got parts of contest of the champions which you, some people don't even know what that is mm -hmm. there's little moments of all that stuff blended in to make a really fun film so i feel like the infinity wars is going to be doing the same exact thing it's going to be blending a lot of these different things to ultimately spin out what you were talking about a brand new different universe yeah. for the avengers i don't know how different it's going to be but if you bring in kang who can alter space and time yeah. and he has that infinity gauntlet i mean we don't even know what's well, going on I, there's a part i could be wrong guy if you guys watching live confirm or look at this up as, as we're doing the show mm. there's something in the back of my uh, head is itching that i th i think kang might belong to fox there's I'm not sure. I, the argument is there, but he originally, he showed up as this weird mm. pharaoh in Fantastic Four. As like Kang. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, right. And then he turned, he, then he got the weird melon head. Right. So do like, we know which studios right now has the rights to him? My guess is it's a combination because he was really, he was Very no, few characters yeah. are a combination. Yeah. Very it, few. If you wanted to split hairs, it's probably going to have to be a trade like Ego the Living Planet. Kind of, yeah. They've yeah. done it already. You know, They've yeah, done it so, once. I'd like to see that trade happen if it does. One of the rumors I heard of this idea, because I mean, in the Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity War, he's, you know, Thanos is doing this because he's got a thing for death, right? Oh, yeah. The female version of death. Yeah. And there's rumors that Hela might be standing, yeah. might be coming in that place. So she may be the villain, the overall villain mm. in the fourth by using him to get the gauntlet and establishing her. Oh, shit. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I've never sure. seen that happen. I've never oh, seen no. that happen before. I'm sorry. It finally it's, happened. Establishing her in Ragnarok right would on. establish everything else going forward. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we're live. There we go. Yeah. I won't be asked back again, <laughs> apparently. Well, no, no. So. well, you know what you're so, talking about is uh, we've, we've mentioned that too. Like, they're not yeah. going to go for having two different deaths right they're like look if we're establishing kate blanchett who's an incredible actress yeah. she's playing the marvel cinematic universe's version of death yeah i mean she's not valhalla she's the opposite she's like the holder of the lost souls and you know she's basically the queen of did the bad part of death right so i think thanos wanting to reunite with death if they made that part of it i think that would work really well jeremy yeah it's, it's one of these things where the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Avengers movies, are bigger than Thanos. Granted, one of the things they might be... It's going to freak the fan base out to have the Avengers go in a direction that doesn't concentrate on Thanos because they've been concentrating on Thanos for so long, but right. the overall universe is bigger than Thanos. There are worse 
things out there yes. than just Thanos. So they're going to have to move in that direction. Uh, I did better, better set it up now than later. And if they're going to do that in, say, the fourth Avengers movie, I feel like we're going to start seeing remnants and the start of it now, which is why Hela is probably the thing I'm going towards. Because it's like, all right, what are they showing now that could possibly replace Thanos or create a new right. arc? And uh, Kate Blanchett is the closest thing we've seen yeah. thus far so it's interesting to see where they're going to go because there's a lot out there that can mess with the Avengers and another thing we mentioned earlier is like you were talking about uh, like this was you were combining universes we were talking earlier a couple hours ago on movie talk so you have to go back and watch that but we were talking about the gauntlet and how those gems have been really a part of the entire phase one phase two oh, yeah. and phase oh, yeah, three it's been the, they have yeah. been the focal yeah. point really if you want to step back and look at all the films as a package the focal point of the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been the Infinity Stones, mm -hmm, right. really, if you step back. Now, one of the things you're going to have to be careful of, and I'm sure they've had a lot of meetings about this over at Marvel, is that from a comic book reader's point of view, we can think about the gauntlet and think all things they can do. They can change time and change reality and all that kind of stuff. But I think Marvel's going to want to be cautious about what would the comic book reading audience really get into and what would just become too trippy for mm. the average? Mm. I, I'm not saying that it is too trippy. I'm just right. saying, I'm sure, because right now, Marvel is doing this really stupid, awful, look, Ma, we're the Matrix ripoff uh, thing with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. right now where oh, all yeah. the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is taking place in the Matrix right now. Really? Uh, yeah, they're just not calling it the Matrix. They're calling it something else. It's really ridiculous and dumb. <laughs> but so, but it, it also might just be their way of testing it out, saying like, yeah. we're, they've, because in this Matrix thing, all the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are now actually Agents of HYDRA. Mm. And it's like this mixed reality world. And maybe this is Marvel's way of like testing the audience a little bit, saying, yeah. would, would they grasp this? Would they be on board with this? And if so, maybe they do, do go a little bit crazy. Well, the other four. thing Feige said, he said, we might not even call it Phase 4, yeah. which also says, look, if the Infinity Gauntlet is over and Avengers 4 is like a brand new, like not even a phase, but it's a new universe where they're like some of the old universe is still left over and some of it is completely transformed, i.e. that could bring in the Fantastic Four, which I always say mm -hmm. I'd like to see that happen, yeah. or it could just alter and change things where Tony Stark is not Iron Man anymore. There's a lot of different things. Yeah. John, John, this is a very important question. Uh -oh. This might be the most important thing <laughs> I'll right. ask you. Is it better than the second and third Matrix movies? No. <laughs> no. No, it's not. Is this real life? It's, yeah, that's it's, right. I'm telling you, it is so stupid. They are oh, so no. desperately trying to be the. Oh, they man. do everything they do in the Matrix that even, oh, and if you die in whatever they're calling it, yeah. if you die in the Matrix, you die in real life. And because they're in the Matrix and then their bodies are still in these these uh, mechanical kind of harnesses where Come one on. guy dies in the Matrix. So <laughs> really? These flat lines. I mean, all they're do missing. Do they have a dance rave? Oh, man. All, I'm waiting for the dance rave. All they're missing is some chicken black named Trinity. Oh, when, once they man. do that, they're completely wrong. I'm waiting for somebody who sounds just like Carl Sagan to be like, you see, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. 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 Anderson. The parts of the second and third Matrix, let's, let's get away. Basically, it's a superhero thing set yeah. in cyberspace, mm -hmm. but the thing I didn't like about Matrix 2 and 3 is like the key master and like the yeah. entire set of Colonel like a Sanders. clone version of the next generation, like all these weird characters, like we must fight them. Or like, I don't care about these characters. I care yeah. about Neo and Trinity and Morpheus. And they added like all these other characters that none of us knew who they were. Look, it's the kid and he's bringing around the weapons. Yeah. And just that's that was the biggest mistake, like adding these all these characters that didn't add it. The Maravangian and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. All this ridiculous. Stuff. Anyway, enough about the Matrix. Let's get into some <laughs> other things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're not talking about it. We're done. Check it out. You know the Matrix 2? It's number two. We got Fox locks down X-related release dates. Ooh. So big news for X-Men fans, as there are now, or X-Men fans of the films, as there are now three X movies coming out in 2018. We've got New Mutants coming out in uh, April 13th. We've got Deadpool 2 coming out June 1st, and Dark Phoenix coming out October 2nd. All three of these films are coming out next year, which is pretty exciting to get three X-Men movies. Yeah. I mean, that, as a, especially if you're an X-Men fan, whether you loved Logan or hated, uh, you know, other, other X-Men films, Apocalypse, or, yeah. it's cool to see that uh, Fox is going full bore into it. Um, so we got, is that a good sign from Fox that they're finally getting it? They've locked into like, look, we got Deadpool, you gave a lot of freedom for Deadpool. You got Logan, you gave a lot of freedom for Logan. Is that good or are we just getting lucky? Because Fox, you know, it's like, what do you think? Here's the conundrum, okay? You gave a lot of freedom for Logan, but you can do that because Logan was a completely isolated movie mm -hmm. that wasn't going to have ramifications or effects on other movies mm -hmm. around it. Deadpool, they treated the same way. You give a lot of freedom to Deadpool because it's not part of a 
<laughs> I mean, oh, continuity, schmontinuity, right. Fox. It's not part of a really interconnected Fox universe at that point, right? right yeah. What I'm really excited about is, and this is the part we have because we've been focused on Deadpool. Yes, we've been focused on the Dark Phoenix. Absolutely, and we should be. New Mutants comes yeah. out in less than a year. Yeah. It comes out in less than a year. So the question now is, with them announcing all three of these movies all at once, now we know Dark Phoenix is still going to be a, a couple of decades removed from what's going on. Right. I haven't heard anybody de determine or uh, you know, uh, flat out say what time era the New Mutants is taking in. Mm -hmm. But the thing that excites me is that with all these dates coming out so close to each other one year, could it be that Fox is signaling we are starting to solidify a shared universe? And at some point, it's going to bring Deadpool into it, mm -hmm. whether or not. I have a feeling we're going to see Deadpool cameo in New, New Mutants, mm -hmm. probably. I think we'll definitely see Cable uh, in New Mutants. So obviously, they're going to start tying it together. And if they do, by necessity, that means that each individual filmmaker won't have more leeway They'll have actually a little bit less. And, you know, if you're under a guy like a Kevin Feige, that's perfectly fine because the dude's right. got the master plan. Can they have that guy? Will it work out for them? That's going to be what we're going to have to wait and see. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. I think we got lucky with Logan. The bigger X universe is a big question mark. I mean, the new cast of Apocalypse didn't impress that much for people to get excited to see the continuation of this. So it's going to be really inter interesting to see if they get Dark Phoenix right because people love Dark Phoenix. People love the storyline. People, in whatever iteration mm. you discovered it, people love Dark Phoenix. So if, it, it, they got to get that right. Or if it's, if it's going to be another mess of a movie, then we just go backwards. To me, I feel like Fox is like, that that kid brother of yours that's always messing up, and then a couple of times you like he's like you think he's turning that corner, you think maybe he's finally coming around, he's figuring things out, and he's gonna do it, he's gonna do it right, and so you're like okay, let's give him a little bit of space, let's see what he can do, and I feel like this is what I think we're gonna get it in this in all three of these movies, we're gonna find out if they've really got what they're what they're going for, and this new mutants idea, and I think what you said, John, is interesting because Logan. We kind of were introduced to X-23. We are introduced to all these younger mutants, right? So do we have Cable to go uh, go forward in time or come back to pick them up and then bring them in the present day times? So there's a way to connect it that could work so that people like are excited to see Daphne Keene again as X-23. And she'll be physically older, so that'll be interesting to see how she progresses with that. Well, I don't think so, that that's not the new mutants that they're going to be adapting. No, no, right, but right, I'm saying they could play with that. It, it, there are the possibilities. Are there were yeah. some doors that are open. The yeah. doors are open, especially having Cable yep. it, yeah. added. You're, you're absolutely right. They could bring the new 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 mutants yeah. into the old new mutants. Right. That, but let me ask you guys this. You're mentioning how much everybody loves change. Yeah. Okay, let's let's go back in time a little bit. I still remember. I'm sure I want to know what your reaction was. The first time I watched X-Men 2. Yeah. X2. Mm -hmm. Which oh, yeah. for a long time I thought was the best comic book movie right. of all time. For, for a long oh, period yeah. of time. It was. I still remember you could tell who read the comics in the theater Yes, as the end credits are about to start and the camera's going over the lake <laughs> and you see the yes. outline of yes. the phoenix yeah. in the water. Yeah, so awesome. And you could tell who the sweaties were yeah. because people were going, Whoa! <laughs> like yeah. start freaking out. It's like, oh, they like, know what it is. What's happening? What's going on? Do you yeah. remember that? Like, that oh, yeah. was crazy I remember fun. seeing it at the, the Chinese, the, the Grom Chinese. Really? Is this where you saw it? Yeah, and uh, coming out and a whole bunch of other nerds that we were all sitting and like we didn't know all of us were there and we all collected and we're like mm. just geeking out at how fun <laughs> <laughs> great that film was right. and yeah that truly is like if you go back in time there weren't we always like to talk about like now you get like nine or ten superhero movies a year yeah. back then there was like one, one every three yeah, yeah. yeah. one yeah. every three and yeah. you'd be like most of them suck right. you, know, you pray to the god they got it right yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> right. well i i particularly am actually really happy to hear that they're moving forward with the younger x-men mm -hmm. from x-men apocalypse because like i've said this before i liked that part of the apocalypse movie yeah. better yeah. than the apocalypse part i like the introduction of the young scott summers young yeah. Jean gray and I'd like to see McAvoy return for a fourth time. What are your thoughts? Well, uh, well, going back to X-Men 2, everyone in the theater was cheering when they saw the Phoenix because the people who didn't know before when Jean was, uh, yeah. Cyclops was the shooting his fire thing, in her eyes. Fire, and yeah. everyone right. looked at their sweaty friend like, what does that mean? And then they were all <laughs> filled in yeah. by the end credits. And they were like, oh, yeah, totally. I knew. I totally knew. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, this, uh, I mean building up, I, I, I'm looking forward to Phoenix. I think one of the things I like about Deadpool and uh, and 
uh, Logan is that they are standalone movies mm. in a world where, I mean, Marvel's made, what, $10 billion on their cinematic universe. Every studio that's doing a comic book movie most certainly has the roundtable discussion of, okay, how do we do a shared universe because it does make more money. But I like, I would like to see a world where Fox just has their standalone movies. I want to see an X-Men movie that doesn't necessarily tie in. I want to see Deadpool 2 not necessarily tie in. It's just, mm. it's kind of like a reprieve from the cinematic universe thing where you can just have a character movie. It doesn't need to tie in. You can concentrate more on the characters, concentrate more on their story, and then go to it. It kind of harkens back to, you know, the good comic book movies of the right. 2000s, yeah. uh, w the ones that were good, you know, Spider-Man 2 and X-Men 2 and X-Men 1. Well, now, and talking, one and talking about <laughs> Dark Phoenix, um, you know, we have that's the original comic book series was pretty intergalactic. Yeah. It went into yes. outer yes. space. Yeah. And, you know, if you haven't read this, it came out more than 30 years ago. So <laughs> I'm going to tell you about it. Don't get weird about spoilers. Like, don't th I don't think the movies yeah. are going to hold too yeah, tight right. to it anyway. Right. 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 But, John, you just, you just pointed out James Gunn mentioned that Kang and the Shi'ar Empire are not owned by Marvel. They're owned by They're Fox. They're currently licensed mm. under Fox. Yeah. Now, Fox owns X-Men, and they could do the Shi'ar Empire. Yes, they could they actually can. have mm -hmm. Xavier fall in love with an alien princess. Yeah. Those are things like... The Star Jammers, like these kinds of parts of the uh, cosmic universe wow. that is owned by Fox. I know. So I Star saying, Slammers. I said Star <laughs> Slammers earlier this morning. The Star yes, Slammers. Star Jammers, That's far the better. the porn version like, of yeah. the X-Men, the yeah. Star yeah. Slammers. Actually, which one is the porn version? Of that? I have to yeah. ask yes, you. that's true. Um, that's true. You're but, right. you know, it's, it's fun to see, like, oh, so many different characters are owned by different companies now. But that, to me, I still dig that we're going to get three X-Men movies. In We'd never year. get that yeah. if it was all these properties were owned by Disney, even though I feel like it'd be fun to see the X-Men be able to play in the Avengers Sandlot. I think we're we're going to get a different stories told by different studios and different creatives. And I, it'll be interesting to see because they're going to be going up against a lot of like the Universal Monsters franchise is oh, going yeah. up against New Mutants. You got Deadpool going up against uh, the Han Solo film in between the Bumblebee spin-off. Like there's a lot of competition for these films coming out that year. So if Fox is standing at the end of the year with some pride with their box office receipts and quality, critical yes. quality of the film, then they I think they'll have rejuvenated their 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 studio once and for all in the superhero genre and be able to go forward with faith from the fans, which is what they ultimately want. I mean, well, look, they're, they're, they're three out of the last four yeah. have been great. X-Men Days of Future Past, Deadpool, Logan. Yep. And then you had uh, Apocalypse, Apocalypse in there. Right. But, but three out of the, that's, I mean, they're batting 750 the last four at bat, yeah. so they're doing pretty good. Yeah, really excited about New Mutants. I want to see that Demon Bear saga come to life. <laughs> Demon Bear. Um, <laughs> all right, number three, we've got Joss Whedon. He's talking about Batgirl. Joss Whedon is officially set and has been announced as the writer-director of the newly announced Batgirl, and he's saying he wants an unknown in the league and it's going to be an origin story. What do you think about casting a fresh face versus you know different actresses we've all been bandying around? And what version of her origin do you want to see? Let's start with you, uh, Roku. Yeah, well, uh, to me, I love this idea. Uh, Joss Whedon has shown a track record of picking unknowns or lesser-known actresses and really letting them shine in his property, even as yeah. recently as that Shakespeare movie that he did. I think it was Much Ado or about whatever. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, about nothing, right? He picked that actress who was a day player on Avengers yep. and picked her out as a... She was a coffee shop waitress and got cut out of the film in the end but they used her as the lead. So he has a track record of doing this. So to me, I'm super excited, but it's got nothing but faith that he'll find the right person. I hope they go with Batgirl year one. I love the fact that that had an homage to the original 1960s creation of mm. Batgirl with Mothman and all that stuff going on. And so, and then she's like an intelligent girl who graduates college in her teens. She fights sexism. She's trying to like get into the department and they don't let her in. Batman's even shutting her out. Like there's so much. And it relates a lot to what's going on nowadays, I think, with uh, women in, in the uh, in the culture like it's becoming a thing to be very aware the women's roles in the pop culture in all 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 the different uh, genres that exist in all the different uh, walks of life and so I think it would hit the right chord and it would push it further showing her that she can stand and she rejects the love uh, advances from Robin so it's mm -hmm. not about finding a love interest for your main character does she have Batman sex with Batman on, on the roof no she doesn't and I was just getting on. as long as they don't <laughs> do that I'd be very happy exactly so I'm, I'm excited to see what Josh will do yeah. with this we well, he's not going to do that. What do you think? Yeah, right. Look, when we heard the name, first of all, it was very pleasant surprise to find out that Joss Whedon was going to jump totally. back into the superhero genre. And really, he's one of the best guys to do it for Batgirl. I mean, yeah. obviously, this guy has a history of writing great, action-packed, strong female characters, whether it's in Buffy, or whether it's in Angel, whether it's in Fly Firefly and Serenity. Yeah. He, I mean, come on, River Tan is like one yeah. of the yeah. all-time great heroines on screen. So to see him bring that is really cool. What I am very curious about, and, and I, I brought this up to a friend of mine who just screamed in my face when I said <laughs> it, but let's remember, DC 
uh, at Warner Brothers, I should say, um, are not afraid to create a universally isolated movie that's separate from the rest of the universe. Remember, they had superhero films going when they launched Halle Berry's Catwoman. Right. But that Catwoman was completely, thank God, it was completely isolated and not mm. connected to anything else. I am curious, is Joss Whedon's Batgirl supposed to be taking place? And, and we're all assuming it is, yeah. but I haven't heard anybody from Warner Brothers DC say, is this Batgirl going to be a part is is she going to be uh, J.K. Simmons' right daughter, daughter. or right. niece it, or niece or niece is possibly, or yeah. is is she just going to be is it a separate is it an Earth one seven five four Batgirl that stand I'm just really curious to see their official explanation right. for it. Um, I just think there's a lot of possibilities here, and, and there's some great possibilities whether it's part of the overall DCEU or whether it's mm -hmm. own standalone film. I think they have some great possibilities, and they got a great director involved. With I would them. I would have to chime in and say if they were doing that, I think that's a bad idea to not make it part of the shared universe. Mm -hmm. I mean, say what you will about the you know the last couple of films, but you got Wonder Woman coming out, you have yeah. Justice League, yeah. you have this whole like kind of list of other films that Batgirl is supposed to be a part of. I, her name is also Batgirl, with right. Batman. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. I mean, if they were to do what you're suggesting, it would kind of it would upset me because I'm like, look, I'm looking for them to create and make the DC universe a little more, you know, solid. Yeah. And you know, the bedrock is a little shaky right now. I'm looking forward to Wonder Woman and Justice League, and I want to see that happen, and I want to see it continue with Batgirl. I mean, look, if they were like saying, look, nothing's connected anymore, we're all separate, it'd be like, cool. I would also like, but don't have some of it connected and some of it not. No, that would be right. odd. It would be odd for them to, to go that route. And that's why I think I was very for when they were going to do Shazam 87 years ago. Um, <laughs> I remember I was very pro the idea of making Shazam its totally. own isolated yeah. film. Let's still have some standalone superhero movies. Right. How about that? But now that they've really progressed in the DCEU, it would be odd for them to have some connected universe movies and some not connected. Yeah. It, it would be odd. Jeremy? She's going to be Alfred's niece from Batman and Robin, John. You don't know that? That's the way these movies go. Wait, you days. found the Batcave? Oh, my God. I guess you're Batgirl. Oh, God, no. it's so weird. Oh, that uh, film. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but but I, I agree with what you guys were saying. It's That was the first thing I thought, where I was like, okay, so it being Batgirl, is, is it connected to Batman? You can't have mm. Batgirl become Batgirl with no Batman. So what Batman are we doing? Is it still the shared universe? All my thoughts right there just mm. really piled on that. I love the fact that he's going with a no-name. Because it's always yeah, gold. It's like it's yeah. like you find a treasure mm -hmm. of someone who can carry a film like that. It's like okay, like it's Hugh Jackman. Like mm -hmm. I'm, right. what, what was it? Twenty something. I don't even want to quantify how many years ago it was. Point is, it was supposed to be Doug Ray Scott was right. going to be right. Wolverine. He got and he got jacked with he got he hurt. Mission like, Impossible yeah, too. Yeah, he's like, look, guys, what Mission Impossible it? Two. See you later, X Men. You know, <laughs> don't know the logistics, <laughs> I know. but I do know that Mission Impossible Two is why he didn't do it. And then yeah. they got this Hugh Jackman guy. I was like, who's that? And that was the last time I ever. I was like, okay, so just don't don't judge too harshly just because of someone you don't know. So I, I hope that we get that Hugh Jackman scenario for Batgirl, you know, like mm -hmm. th this person we don't know who can be in a bunch of stuff after that. I mean, if she has the, the charisma to carry the role, sure, you don't need a big name. You just you just need the good story, the good characters, and someone who could tell the story. I think Joss Whedon is that person. But the number one thing on my mind is what universe does it take place in? Yeah. Is it the DC Cinematic Universe we know? Is Batman even a part of it? Is it Ben Affleck Batman? No one knows. And that's what I'm going to be thinking about for, for weeks to come. Yeah, you bring up a good point because Tom Holland is kind of doing that with Amazing Spider-Man. People right. are excited about Tom Holland because they kind of knew him but didn't really know him mm -hmm. that right. well. You know, he'd been in smaller films. And so for him to stand out and do uh, Peter Parker, we can say that's a Peter Parker. We're not yeah. going, that's Tom Holland as right. Peter Parker. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that can work. And the Doug Ray Scott thing is funny because he got hurt in a motorcycle accident on the set of Mission Impossible 2. That's why he that's couldn't why do he it. Couldn't that's do why he couldn't it? do it. Oh. And yeah. that, that's Brutal. the thing that sucks. Talk about a career switch, man, yeah. completely. Oh, man. So I hope it. I hope they do that. And you're right. Jason Todd's Robin is dead here, right? If we do Suicide Squad, well, if we're mixing this they, all They in, never said it was Jason Todd. No, right. Nothing well, in the movies true. have ever that's said true. that. It's, it's just fair point. It's some dude no, who was wearing the Robin wearing outfit. The yeah. Yeah. Hey, guys. Or it would be, it, yeah, yeah, it would be him. Let's right. stop talking about death and move into trailers. Hell. Everybody loves trailers. <laughs> you know what popped up? Two different trailers this week. We got Cloak and Dagger. And then we got Krypton. Now, one of them was an official release, and the other was totally full-on leaked, and people were like, get that offline. And so it was jumping around, and then different like subtitled versions popped up online. So if you didn't get a chance to see the Krypton trailer, it's up somewhere 
on the dark web. Learn how to use it. <laughs> find out about it. Cloak and Dagger is totally available. Mm. Let's get your thoughts on both of these trailers. Let's, let me start with you, Jeremy, for either one. Well, I don't know much about Cloak and Dagger. I do know my, my introduction to Cloak and Dagger was from Maximum Carnage. I was mm. reading Maximum oh, Carnage. Yeah. I was like, like, Cloak and Dagger, yeah, that, that 80s movie about the kid who can <laughs> see the spy. Is that the right. note? Totally different. So, But that's my that's my introduction to Cloak and Dagger. I know that he has the cloak, and, and she has a crystal, and, yeah. and that's what it is. So <laughs> you see this, and I was, if you watch this trailer... I would not have known this is the cloak and dagger from comic mm -hmm. books right. that I knew until near the end where things start happening. Yeah. And really, you still wouldn't. If I saw that trailer and someone was like, what is that? I'd be like, um, Stranger Things 2. I have no <laughs> idea what it would be until the cloak and dagger title comes on. And then you're like, oh, I guess it's cloak and dagger. It looks interesting, though. I mean, it, it'd be up to you to tell me whether or not it follows the canon at all. Right. Um, but as for Krypton, I missed it before it went into the dark web. Oh, okay. So uh, I, uh, I don't... My, my laptop is for certain things only, <laughs> and it's not linked to the dark web yet, but I'm working on it, right. but I, I haven't seen the trailer. I will provide you some links. <laughs> right. uh, I know, like, where, where is it? <laughs> like, I mean, do I get the subtitle I shall person? show you, John, the way of the dark force. <laughs> so it being Krypton, is this like, oh, this is yeah. Kal-El's Krypton? Yes, it well, is. It's is, like, it's a couple hundred yeah. years before, and Krypton, they still have, they've got a bunch of CW characters mm. running around, it's different kind of science fiction-y Do they outfits? have a bunch of people on Krypton warning that the planet could be heading for an ecological disaster, and then some <laughs> leaders saying, nah, that's just nonsense, that's junk science, Not don't yet. listen to them. No, it's yeah. even before Fake that. News. Yeah, because yeah, I think they're sort of, they're like, we want to kind of milk this Krypton thing. <laughs> Nothing's blowing up yet. It's sort of, it's we're sticking seasons. around. Yeah, we're sticking around. So it's a house of L. So, I mean, you know what? It, 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 it was the, the Krypton trailer was interesting enough for me to like, look, I'm going to watch that pilot or whatever ends up airing. Mm. I'm going to watch it because I love science fiction. I love the backstory of Krypton. House of L, I'm there. Cloak and Dagger, you're right. To me, it felt a little bit uh, kind of like a, you know, I'm not going to rip on this, a CW vibe to it. It just felt more like an after school kind of, you know, romance, kind yeah. of like young teens, yeah. kind of like, I'm the Y, you know, young adult, but you know, so yeah. I was like, and then all of a sudden she's like, look, I've got this weird dagger. And he's like, I'm a cloak. And then yeah. the credits, you're like, what am I watching? <laughs> it's not really like the comic book, yeah. but once again, I thought it was different enough that I'm like, look, they got to try something different. It's not going to just be cloak and dagger from the comics. Mm -hmm. They have to translate it. So with that, I was like, look, I'll give that a shot too. What do you think, John? Well, the, the cloak and dagger one, I, I just don't know what to make of it at this point. I think you're right. There's some weirdness in there, but at the same time, there's some kind of cool style. Mm -hmm. In there, so look again, like Jeremy, my only exposure to Cloak and Dagger is a 1984 film with the little kid. Oh and, yeah, and, with the spy. and, and right. who, who were the two stars of that? The, who, the little, there's a little kid, oh, and yeah. the older <laughs> guy. I don't um, remember. I don't know. The, the older guy had. Oh, was God. it the guy Hold from on, Mantis? Was it Dabney guy? Coleman, oh, wow. who was the Commodore in Boardwalk Empire. Oh, right. And the kid. Was, was Elliot from E.T. E. Yeah. Henry, Henry Thomas, Thomas. Henry which, which Thomas. I think is the only thing I can remember. Wow. So I mean, that has nothing to do with no. this. Right. But I, I, and I looked for the Krypton thing. I couldn't find it. Okay. Oh, yeah. so okay. Dark, like, web. Yeah, dark, yeah. dark web. Dark right web. After the, right job. after the show, we're going to the dark web. Yeah. So. <laughs> they definitely took it down. Uh, well, I love the club. My sister, that was her favorite comic growing oh, up. Oh, no so kidding. I would buy it for her. Oh, and we'd nice. read it together. You know, I got her into comics and she was, she got into Alpha Flight after that. So she was a big fan of those kinds of things. Alpha Flight. Yeah, she loved that stuff. So to me, Cloak and Dagger has a special place in my heart. I think this trailer was fantastic. I like that they took their time. Like Jeremy said, you don't even know this is a superhero thing until the end. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is awesome. And Cloak and Dagger is no joke. Listen, it's, a, it's an interracial situation, which I enjoy. And also, they kill. They kill in the comics, you know. Mm -hmm. They kill drug dealers. They kill. So if they if they're gonna play it like safe, then I think it's gonna let this down. But if they have occasional moments where they kill, this will take it to a whole nother level. And like you said, John, you're not sure what to make of it. Right. If they do a quick left turn and you have these moments where they kill, then everybody's gonna be like, "Oh crap, I gotta watch this show." Well, so the trailer is set up to make it possibly work. And you have that whole thing where they're from two sides of the tracks, right. so we can have that those conversations because he's like a runaway and she's from the rich family, and they all feel like outcasts, which is really gonna appeal to a lot of the that demographic they're going I for. think it has to go dark like that. I remember, yeah. uh, you know, reading the very first Cloak and Dagger miniseries. Yes. It was a four, it was four issue issues, miniseries. Yeah. And I remember getting into it because I was like, man, it got it did get really dark. Mm -hmm. And they were codependent, but they are also like taking out criminals yeah. serving justice like the Punisher. So, <laughs> you know, if you haven't heard of Cloak and Dagger, yeah. they really kind of are, they're, they're starting it out in that kind of nicer, romantic, kind of right. like, hey, but it's going to get dark and it's going to get dark really quick. Yeah. Um, that's our hope. So let's go on to the next one. Number five, we got New Kingsman, the Golden Circle trailers up. So speaking of trailers, 
The Golden Circle is here. It went online. It's crazy. Let's talk about the sequel. What did you guys think of the trailer, Jeremy? Uh, the trailer, I, I half liked and half went, oh, okay. I don't mm. like the fact that they showed, I'll say it showed what they showed at the end of the trailer. I wouldn't have He's wanted, in the poster. I don't care. I don't <laughs> want to know. I do <laughs> not want to know. The only poster I saw was half of uh, Edgerton and half of, uh, it was like Harry. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was Channing Tatum oh, and yeah. Edgerton. That's the only part. I didn't see him anywhere in the poster. I don't care. Don't show me that. Don't put it in the poster either. <laughs> Just leave it. Um, I like the song they used. Uh, the, yeah. the CGI. He put out Instagram pictures of himself on set. <laughs> I am. I am now on to the other parts of the trailer, and you're still on that one thing. Like I've moved on. John. So the song. I've, yeah, yeah. I so like the way the they integrated the sound effects yeah, yeah. with the song. Yeah, the song was yeah. great. I, yeah. I just. I, I love that song. I'll listen to it anytime I go into an airport. The CGI when the place blows up, I thought was okay. Mm, uh, and yeah. it, you're right, right. It, it, there was a little like, all right, maybe they'll fix it. It's, it's, it's down the line. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's down the line. We'll see what happens. I have seen them uh, fix CGI from trailer to release. Sure. I've seen it not happen. Yeah, I've, right. I, I've been the person like, they're going to fix it. Then you see the movie, you're like, they didn't fix it. Mm. It's just the way it is. Um, but I thought I thought it was fine. I'm most, the thing that grabs me most about it is the fact that Matthew Vaughn's still on. I loved no. the first one. I will probably love this. No. Yeah, I'm going to say I, I love the trailer, and I love that it was like that, like, strange fusion of James Bond with like superheroism. It's like you had that guy with a metal arm doing crazy bionic stuff. I felt yeah, like yeah, I was yeah. like watching cool. Spectre Gadget yeah, stuff. Yeah, Spectre like felt half live action cartoon. Mm -hmm. A lot of goofiness, which the first one had a lot of fun goofiness, but it never went too full bore cartoon. Yeah. So I feel like with Matthew Vaughn in charge, it's going to ride that line. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. It comes out in a couple months, like August. So we got yeah. about another like seven months ago. What, did, what are your thoughts on it? <laughs> I liked the trailer. I didn't love it, but but keep this in mind. I also thought the trailers to the first movie were meh. Mm. We're okay. We're okay. And then I loved the movie. Mm. This was a first trailer put way out in advance. It's not even a full trailer. It was only about a minute 20. So it's really a teaser. It's really an announcement trailer. So really, I shouldn't expect much. This is just a trailer to say, hey, world, this movie's coming. Mm -hmm. Here's a little taste of what you're going to get. And that's fine. So it didn't do anything to blow my socks off. Yes, I did like seeing Harry oh. at the <laughs> end oh shaving. God. You know yeah. what? Uh, right now, you're quantifying in your head. You're like, I actually hired a guy to be on Movie Talk who keeps his nose out of the rumor mill. <laughs> and right now, you have to deal with that. <laughs> that's me. But I thought that was a very interesting shot um, at the end, and all, like. But I mean, as I said on Movie Talk this morning, I don't think if they hadn't already put out the poster and if they hadn't already been Instagramming everything, right. if they at least tried to keep his involvement in the film a little quiet, then when that first trailer comes out yeah. and you see Colin Firth shaving at the end, everybody's going, "What?" But right. like, okay, yeah, we know, yeah. like we know. But so, here's the thing: unfortunate. like, you're a movie going audience, and you're not like super sweaty nerds, like <laughs> typing and like we get all this. Like, look, the picture, you know, yes, it was on Instagram, but how many people are following the Kingsman but, Instagram? But the poster, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Egerton. Firth. Yeah. <laughs> like it I, says I know. Them, it does. I'm just, with you guys. Just imagine you didn't see you that post. Right. <laughs> wouldn't, you, wouldn't you be shocked and amazed if you I didn't have, have all I that would've. information? I agree. Roka? Yeah, yeah, I think I'm in the same boat. I like the trailer, didn't love the trailer. Yeah. The CGI really, really made right. me upset. Because I'm like, it's 2017, and you're doing a sequel to a film that was m uber successful. Mm -hmm. You can spend the money to do the CGI if you're going to release this as a first trailer. But I did like the idea of the American statesman. Like the idea right. of the statesman. That state, is very the cool. Statesman, very right? cool. You've got Shannon Tate, you've got Jeff Bridges. You know what's interesting about the trailer, though? Julianne Moore gets top billing. This is Taron Edgerton's franchise. Right. But they gave Julianne Moore first name, and on the poster, she's first on the poster as well. So this is an interesting choice. <laughs> to make her the lead of this, like kind of the pseudo lead of this film. I love the idea of my way. And they destroy, I wonder if they destroy his family or anything like the, where they're standing with right. the rain. Like that doesn't look like they where they were standing no. before. Yeah. So it may yeah. be that they're it killing like everything. There's a lot of dark it. stuff happening. Exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah. And I love the fact that it does still keep that vibe of the stylized violence, which is, which is an homage to like the sixties bond, the, 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 the Sean Connery bonds, the Roger Moore bonds, the wink and smile. Yeah. And they've got the sexiness of the woman in her lingerie and him winking like the keep that stuff. That's the vibe of mm -hmm. the, of this franchise. And I love that they're double down on it and makes me excited to see the movie if the trailer is not 100 very played. much looking forward to yeah. seeing that well let's talk about something that we did see we're not we're going to do a real quick non-spoilers talk about guardians of the galaxy volume two uh we got a chance to some of us john have you seen it i yet? have not seen it so, right, so we're gonna, away. yeah we're going to keep it super non-spoilery uh all three of us got a chance to see it last week the embargo's lifted so we're, let's just give a quick one minute 
take on your opinion on Guardians. We'll start with you, John. Uh, it is, uh, and by the way, you can see a, a, like a 30 minute review that we did. It's on our YouTube channel here. Watch for mm -hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy Review. To sum it up, it is a fun, entertaining, uh, exciting ride. They've upped the, the, they ramped up the values of the humor and a lot of things that made the, the first one a little exciting. It lacked a little bit more in the story. I felt like the, the story didn't even really get going until the first part of the third act. Mm -hmm. um, there's not as much action as there was in the first one. Uh, the, and the music, to me, the music wasn't anywhere near as memorable as the first one. That's just to say that I didn't think this move, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, was quite as good as Guardians of the Galaxy 1. Mm -hmm. But Guardians of the Galaxy 1 is freaking fantastic. Right. So the fact that it's not quite as good as the first one is okay. It's still a good, fun, entertaining movie. I think people will enjoy it if they give it a shot. So Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one, is the cosmic yardstick to which all things are measured yeah. at this point. Because we literally watched it again yesterday yep, and did a commentary, a commentary track that will be up later this week. And my God, it was so much fun. Even with us talking while the movie's going on, just talking about scenes yeah. from it or what, you know, extrapolating ideas from it. Um, also, that our commentary is not a spoiler. We don't talk about volume two either. Even, even yeah. though we'd yeah, seen no, it, we, mm -hmm. we specifically avoid it, even giving any connections away because we want to see, we want you to see it as fresh as possible. My opinion on it, I've said this uh, a couple times online. I just found it to be a little uneven, but I really loved it. I really enjoyed the film. I came out of there not only saying, you know, I can't wait to see this again, but I can't wait for volume three. It, it didn't detract from my enjoyment, but definitely Guardians of the Galaxy volume one is just an incredible journey through space, through characters, through different parts of the Marvel universe, the cosmic universe. We're getting to go to the Nova yeah. Empire. Mm. We're getting to go inside a celestial's brain. We are traveling from the very beginning to the very end through all these different scenarios. And for myself, there's not enough traveling in volume two. There's The storyline is set. <clears throat> and like you said, a lot of things don't really happen until the third act. I also found the mixture of humor was a, a little off for me. Some of the jokes didn't land or went on too long, and so that created this uneven texture right. but where some of the jokes, some of the jokes of are did. incredibly yeah. funny. And I mean, I gotta say, Rock, Rocket Raccoon and Drax just make me laugh. Groot, Groot. I mean, but I'm saying Drax and, and Rocket are my favorites. They just everything, every dumb thing that Drax and does, you know, you I can't it. help but laugh. Here's and that's the thing. You just put your finger on it. the reason why. The main reason, there are lots of reasons why the first Guardians is amazing, but the main reason why the first Guardians is amazing, and ultimately the reason why Guardians of the Galaxy 2 works, is because what James Gunn has done is he made us love these characters. Mm -hmm. We love, mm -hmm. we love Drax, and we love Gamora, and we love Star Wars, and we love Rocket, we love Groot, we like we love uh, Yondu, we love we Nebula. Even, we even love Nebula. I mean, yeah. they've yeah. given us, he's given us such great characters that we just love going for the ride with them. And despite some of the other shortcomings, that's what ultimately, to me, makes the movie really worthwhile. I agree. And we're not going to, like I said, <laughs> non-spoilers, but as you probably read online, there's a ton of extra credit post -credit sequences. Scenes. There's yeah. so many post-credit sequences <laughs> that just thinking about them right now is putting a smile on my face. It's it's a really fun film. Uh, like I said, don't expect Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. Just expect its friend, Volume 2. It's never going to be as good. <laughs> what do you think, Jeremy? No, I, I, I do think there's enjoyment in it, and uh, it, it does have fun for sure. Not as good as the first one. Yes, absolutely. I, I liked anything that had to do with Star Lord. It really concentrates a lot on Star Lord. In that, James Gunn made us care about all the characters. So when yeah. a lot of the characters kind of get pushed to the side for the sake of Star Lord's story, you're like, well, what about them? I mean, Drax is funny, but he's the destroyer. He doesn't really destroy much in there. Um, <laughs> I, I, I liked Nebula's story because what I loved about it is before this, we haven't seen Thanos do anything really heinous, but mm. Nebula has a few stories about Thanos that mm. actually add to like, oh my, you oh, mean, yeah, that are horrifying. Yeah, like right, he yeah. is actually a horrid person. He actually does need to be taken out. Before that, I only knew Thanos was horrible because Schnepp told me Thanos is horrible. I was not going to give him any spoilers. <laughs> right. I, like, you know, I, I, I didn't know before that. There's so several I, giant thick tomes. I was like, you can read right. this. He's like, oh God, stop. <laughs> You're killing me. I thought Yondi was the standout for yes. sure in this movie. Yeah, Yondi, it was great. anything Yondi, I thought was good but in the end i walked out going all right it was you know had enjoyment in it if you have a beer it'd probably be a little better but the, i enjoyed it for what it was and give props to sean gunn too like there's the return of so many characters from volume one in this and they all get a little bit of extra flavor yep. you know mm -hmm. so 
definitely all of us really love the film. I know you're hearing a lot of a lot of stuff like, you know, critics didn't like it. It's like, relax. Yeah. Critics really did like it. It's just like they're comparing it to like the ultimate cosmic Marvel film. So even with all the same cast and the same director, it's hard to live up to that kind of expectation. Mm -hmm. So just go in knowing it's going to be a fun ride. Let's get into Minor Mutations. This week, we have got... Justice League International trailer debuts. We've got the Secret Empire makes Steve Rogers the villain. Number three, we've got Guardians is almost done on the Infinity War shoot. Number four, we've got Marvel initiates the legacy policy, which is going to go back to the old numbering of the, all the original comics, which I think is great. Uh, number five, we've got Wasp gets equal time in the sequel, says director Peyton Reed. So let's talk about that. What pops off mm -hmm. to you, Roka? Oh, I love the Justice League International trailer. I, you know, even more than the one that they released before. Aquaman has really been the standout for me. What yeah. Momoa is doing in these trailers, I'm like, I'm happy. Even though he's not actually holding a trident, because he's got five <laughs> points, I still <laughs> like the fact that he's he's the Aquaman that they've chosen. I'm really surprised about how much I'm enjoying him. And I because I did I wasn't 100 percent on board on that cast. Can we just go and back like in that. time for a second? Yeah. Yeah. It's like no one on this panel would have ever said what you said. And yeah. I agree with you oh. that it was like, goddamn Aquaman. I was like, I could never thought I'd say that yeah. Aquaman was like the standout of the just like right. none of us. The guy who talks to fish floating yeah. around in his weird little orange shirt. You yeah. know, it's like <laughs> orange shirt. Um, That's what do you, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. What do you think, John? Uh, well, I what was uh, last week. I think I got to go to Marvel and I got to stand in with Peyton Reed, the director oh, of nice. uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, with Peyton and his artist and looking at the actual production art of what the Wasp's costumes are going to look like. Both going back to Janet's, Janet, uh, Janet's costume, nice. and now the new one, and it was just so cool. And it's like, and seeing some of the, um, I'm, they weren't storyboards per se, but they were pieces that are going to be in the movie. Color concept design. Yes, and what's going to be in the movie, it's like, yeah, you could tell this truly is. It's not Ant-Man 2 with, with guest appearance by the Wasp. This right. is going to be Ant-Man and the Wasp. And so that looks really cool. I'm very excited about that. Uh, Guardians being done shooting Infinity War, not surprised. We always suspected the Guardians would play a small role in the, in the Infinity War movie coming up, so I'm not surprised that that's done. Hate what they're doing with Steve Rogers. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's my thought. Yeah, I, I was going to be like, all right, what is Secret Empire and what, what douchebag made Steve Rogers a villain? Do you remember that yeah. few months ago there was that big that big yeah, piece of came Hydra. out? Where, yeah, he was a hail. Is that what it is? Yeah. Like apparently it's he's that been a bad plus, guy all along. Plus even worse, but yeah. check, check it out, guys. There's something called the Cosmic Cube, so relax. Yeah. I, lo I love how, like, look, remember Dark Phoenix died, then she came back, then she died again. Remember Superman died, came back, did all that. How remember this stuff. This is a cool story. Yeah. And so everybody's getting all worked up. Steve Rogers is a Nazi. It's not even <laughs> part of it. It's some mind altering thing that the Red Skull's behind. Come on, get with it. It's a comic book. All right. Schnepp, <laughs> don't bring logic and reason to this comic book. <laughs> all right. Stop all right. I'm trying. Steve Rogers, you don't mess <laughs> with him. Um, I do, I'm, yeah. I, I'm still on the fact that it's not a trident. I'm like, God, <laughs> that, that, I didn't even think about that. Most people start sharing that with me on Twitter. It's yeah. like, well, I mean, speak, it's a fork now. I mean, it's to say five points is no longer <laughs> a trident. Can they just call it a spork? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's an aqua spork. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy greater. being done shooting, it, it's easy when they don't play a big role and you've now like separated the movie into mm. two that are now no longer linked. Totally. So, and we knew they were, uh, when I when we saw that Tom Holland video where he's like, oh, well, I'm here with Steve Rogers. Yeah. And, and I'm like, we're like, hey, so he's there, the Guardians, this is Infinity War, so they're totally going to be in it. So I love that. And I, I actually love the fact that Steve Rogers isn't actually bad. Thank you, Schnapp. I was about to stab someone with a spork. Look, they're going to, it's a slow drip type mm. of coffee thing where you know they're going to reveal it later but they're milking it for all they can where people are like there's like going to be a protest march next week about <laughs> I can't believe it but just relax the thing that I'm most excited about is the Marvel initiating that legacy yes! thing I think yes. going back to the old numbering a lot of people are like well if I see a comic book that says issue 797 how am I ever going to catch up you'll never catch up <laughs> you'll never catch up that's not what it's about it's about the idea that this thing has been around yeah. for so long it should be something like my god this this has been around for 797 issues. It's It's got something there for me. Mm. And it's, it allows you to go back in time and research issue 613, issue 412. You, that's the thing about the history and the past is the more you learn, the more you love, the smarter you get. It's not about the surface value of an issue one. Yeah. So that's all. I'm not going to get you know, into the, a the cool thing is, I, I remember thinking about this is that the great thing about reading a comic book story arc is a lot like riding a bus. 
You can hop on at any stop. Mm. You can hop on and it'll and it'll take you somewhere great. You don't have to find the origin of the bus route. You can just jump on it and then just get caught up. You'll become familiar with the bus and the route as you go. You can jump on it anytime. I love I, that. I love that analogy. That's a nice bus you've been riding. Last time I rode a bus, I lost my wallet and woke up in a dumpster. It's like, what bus well, are you riding? Easy. Let's just say, but you can pick the right route. First of all, I, lo- you know, I love this. Legacy. Are you on a Greyhound? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm next to a homeless. Like, what's happening, person? I'm high. Got a half a sandwich. <laughs> no, not that bus. No, no, no. Depends on what route. Leave me oh. alone, Finstock. Yeah, no, I, what I'm saying is, what I like is, is this I legacy thing. I agree with you, John. Because right. one of the things I'm looking forward to is when these things come out and get going, is going home and comparing both. Like opening up the, the my boxes of comics and then going back and comparing how they're connecting these stores. It's going to be so much fun. All right, we're getting to those Twitter questions. So send in some live Twitters. We're going to pop off some that I picked earlier, and then we're going to get to the live ones. Number one, we got Big Sal asks, asking, what are your thoughts on Hulu's Batman and Bill documentary? Can't wait for it. Looks amazing. Well, uh, Sal, I'm with you 100%. This is something that's been going on for years, and it's about time that Bill Finger gets some of the credit for creating Batman. He's basically the guy who came up with Batman with Bob Kane. It's not, it's not the opposite. Right now, it's Bob, created by Bob Kane with Bill Finger. It's technically, it should say, created by Bill Finger with Bob Kane, because Bob Kane had an idea was just like, hey, it's a guy in a red outfit that looks a lot like Robin, and his name is Batman. And then Bill Finger came up with everything else. He came up with the cowl. He came up with the outfit. He came up with the mansion. He came up with calling it Gotham City. He came up with everything. So that he's finally getting the right credit and that people are finally going to learn about it in 2017 fills my heart with joy. So I don't know if you guys were aware of this, but now recently all of the movies, starting with Batman v Superman, credit, not like, you know, Siegel and Schuster credit Superman. uh, Kane. Kane and Finger get credit for Batman. And only now has it recently been in comic books. And I think it's, you know, these kinds of oversights that happen within our industry, as long as they finally get corrected corrected and addressed, I'm into it. Any thoughts on it? Yeah, it's like Thomas Edison, and then you find out about Tesla. Yeah. You're like, wait, 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 there's this other dude right. who was like this brilliant inventor. So anytime those people get credit, I'm pumped about yeah, it. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I, get psyched, I get lost in this idea that they all like are in a community together, but in fact, they kind of screw each other over sometimes. And it's unfortunate that uh, the history of comics is with this happening and so the, anything they can do to correct it I'm 100% on board definitely next question we got is from Mr. Undecelian asks please mention Diane Lane's great comment regarding Martha Gate on Collider Heroes love what she said well let me directly quote what Diane Lane said she said um, the Martha scene it's the compassion for a man who's lost his mother when you understand the wound, you can work better with people. Now, I think I like what she said. Yes. And me and John go back and forth and talk about this a lot, like where I didn't like that scene where they're screaming out Martha and this and that. There could have been such a different approach to it, different ways to have that. But what the I, the intent of the idea makes sense. It's in the execution of the idea that I have the big problem with. John? Yeah, the execution. Look, I'm a defender of this movie, mm-hmm. but I will say the execution of that scene was botched. Mm-hmm. But if you want to know why I defend it, I, I put together like a, a video on YouTube a while ago called Defending the Martha Scene. <laughs> so if you want to go check that out on my thoughts, I have a video called I'm Defending the Martha right Scene now. where I give my reasons why, why uh, and how I saw the Martha Scene and why I defend the scene. I, I, yeah, I don't like the Martha scene, and I think if it was anybody other than the world's greatest detective, then I would have bought the scene a little bit more. But with Batman, it just seemed like this doesn't make sense. This doesn't right. make sense. So, but I like what she had to say. Love what she had to say. Yeah, there, there. It's all about execution. There are parallels between Alfred dying and Mister Freeze trying to control death, and Batman trying to control death in Batman and Robin. It's execution. <laughs> That's what matters. <laughs> all right. Next question. We got Jay Miller. Now that the 2018 X Men films have been announced, what are the 2019 films? Jay Miller you're too greedy relax <laughs> he says x-force gambit alpha flight well we know x-force is in the you know joe carnahan is writing it we think he's directing it so i'll say x-force and i'd love to see canada's own alpha, alpha flight Flies. how about you john i uh, i i would love it so much that i'm pretty convinced they won't do it um <laughs> i i'm gonna i'm gonna make a I got, i'm not basing this on any insider information okay this is a i believe we're gonna get deadpool 3 the next year mm. oh. i believe they're gonna wow. be i think they're already working on deadpool 3 wow. i think we're gonna get deadpool 3 in 2019 love to see it you break you? my heart i want alpha flight i want puck i want shaman i want north star i want yeah. the all. sasquatch sasquatch yes, yes. I still want Channing Tatum as Gambit. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I want. It's never going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's never going to Who knows? You don't know. Uh, Mr. Vaughn asks, do you think Suicide Squad's story would have benefited by being more like the Fast and Furious (laughs) action plots? 
Uh, weird question. I got to say, Bad no. <laughs> you see Vin Diesel jumping submarines. You gotta, like, add Deadshot in there. Ah, I'm taking shots. I just, I don't get it. I thought Fast and the, Fur Fast and the Furious, the, the Fate of the Furious had some really cool scenes. I love The Rock and Jason Statham. Mm. Any of those scenes that they were in, yeah. I thought were electric. The rest of the film was really dumb as rocks, dumb as bricks. It was <laughs> beyond stupid. Uh, your thoughts about yeah, uh, uh, Suicide Squad uh, plot? My, my, my big thing about Suicide Squad is the, the Twitch Witch's brother. I'm like, where'd you come from? But other than that, I, I, <laughs> like, what, I, sure, if they added a submarine and cars, I guess it could have benefited. I don't know. Uh, I, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you could start there, but then you'd have to do so many, so much more to, to elevate that film. So yeah, right, you could it. start there. Here we go. We got the live Twitter questions. We're going to rock it through about five of these right off the bat. Uh, Wizzelanti asks, can MCU Spidey and separate, can MCU Spider-Man be separate from Sony exclusive and can they coexist in the multiverse once the, the Spider-Man movies are over? I think that's what I'm trying to mm. make out of your sentence there. <laughs> what do you guys think? Once these movies are all done with Marvel, can they coexist with Spider-Man going back to Sony? Well, look, I still, I honestly think there is a possibility here that in the, the Sony boardrooms, there is talks they're trying to plan out having their own Spider-Man in mm. their own Sonys, and it will be uh, 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 Miles Morales. Wow, yeah. Uh, I believe that's what, I, th I think that's what they're planning to do. I think they're going to start off with Venom, and they're going to try a couple things first, and if things start to go well, I think they're going to introduce their yeah. own Spider-Man being Miles Morales over there while having Peter Parker in the MCU. So, but like, but I think they also want to wait, not just to see if Venom works and the other things work, they want to wait to see if they and Marvel are actually going to be able to extend that deal that they have right now mm -hmm. past Homecoming too, because if they don't, then it's a moot point. But I think we all know they will extend that deal, so mm -hmm. they're going to evaluate what they need to do. I think that's a great point, John. I think it'd be interesting to see what they would happen if they got it together and made that happen. My Miles Morales would be amazing, right? If they put that in with Venom and Carnage, like John said, Sinister Six. They're still not letting go of Sinister Six. That could be a possibility. And can you imagine the nerdgasms five years from now when Miles Morales and Peter Parker cross over and have a Spider-Man crossover <laughs> oh, movie? Okay. That you know, studios will work out if there's billions involved. You know, no, they will. That will happen. Yeah. Yeah. The Comic book movie wise, what we're seeing with Marvel and Sony has never been done. Yeah. And it's, it's a pretty big deal. So, the best I can tell you is it's possible because <laughs> anything's possible at this point. This is new ground that they're carving out for us. Yeah. I would love to see a crossover. I mean, the, the comic book verse is bigger than just the one issue here, one issue here. It, it all does tie together. I'd love to see it eventually weave back around and tie in. Definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, Box Office Jack asks For Infinity War or Gauntlet, what secondary MCU character or villain would you like to see come back? Abomination? I love the idea of the Hulk's abomination mm. from that Incredible Hulk, Ed Norton, standalone, yeah. coming back. Only when he comes back, he looks a little bit more like the comic book version of Abomination. And, you know, get those weird thin ears. I was missing that. I would also like to see Red Skull. I mean, come on. That's my we've, that's yeah. we've been Jeremy, what yeah. are your thoughts about that's Red Skull? That's my answer. Yep. The whole thing, I'm like, you talk about Abomination, I'm going to throw Red Skull in here. Yeah. Even if it's not Hugo Weaving, I'd love to see Hugo Weaving come back, but the dude has so much makeup at this point. Right. It doesn't necessarily have to be yeah. Hugo Weaving. I would love to see Red Skull. I feel like there's a lot that you could do with the cat All I can do is echo Jeremy's thing. I, Red right. Skull is such a wasted opportunity. Like this, this needs. He's such a great, great mm -hmm. character. Even in, even in Old Man Ho Logan, he's fantastic. So you gotta get. Have I him can't in there. even believe that. I didn't think of this, but for it, Screw Kang, Red Skull is yeah. the villain of yeah. of the Fourth Avengers. Yeah. He's the one with the cosmic cube. That'd be right? great. He'd be I mean, perfect. That makes total back, sense. Right? I mean, uh, it's just right in front of our face, and we never thought of it. Um, Next question we've got is uh, Jacek Hadjuk asks, what is the single comic book volume that has the most of your favorite characters? For me, it's Kingdom Come. Now, Jeremy and I were just talking about yeah. Kingdom Come. It's probably going to pop up in his Awesome Tacular show at, at one of our comic book visits because yeah. we both love that comic book yeah. series. Um, I think it's a great call. I also love Marvels, which is also mm. like it's a great look at like from the from an outsider's perspective at all at how you would if it was really happening how you would actually see all that happen. All of those kinds of films. I mean the t the comic books that is Crisis on Infinite Earths, yeah. all those big kind of crossover over events that have all the characters in any one. Of the yeah, pop brother, I, ne I never. Knew, I never thought anything would come close to Dark Knight Returns in my mind, right. and, and Kingdom Come is my absolute... I read that thing every That's two great. or three weeks. I have it as I walk through my hallway. I pick it up and just read it, because there's so much in it. But I would also throw in Watchmen, because you have uh -huh. so many different versions of Watchmen through the decades that they talk about, and now that Watchmen has been brought into the rebirth of DC, 
why not? You can explore all of that. So I loved all the different Watchmen that were available through the decades, and to explore their characters would be so much fun. In, totally. In terms of sheer quantity and quality of characters, I don't think you can beat Kingdom Come. That was yeah. my first graphic novel I ever read, by the way. Really? Oh, yeah. I started oh, out so with great. that, and then I did Dark Knight Returns, yeah. and then after that, it was like, all right, well, I guess I capped. I capped very early. <laughs> in friends. I mean, I, I've read some great stuff right. out yeah, there, yeah, but yeah. those are, if you're going to start, those are two to start with. Yeah. Those are those are good. Like, those are like good founding foundations yeah. to yeah. grow off of. Yeah. You know, you've been rocking on the Swamp Thing. Yeah, man. oh, I've been oh, rocking nice. the Alamore Swamp Thing lately, too, oh, for yeah. sure. All right, next question. We got Fuzzy Wuzzy asks, who owns the Beyonder for Marvel? Well, I'll just Ooh. answer that really quickly. Marvel. They have Secret <laughs> War, so. Um, but I just wanted to get into that before we get Beyonder. back to the sweaty question of the week, and that is from Elijah M. Turner. And he asks, I want a good Savage Dragon adaptation so bad. What would it take to make the dragon successful on the big or small screen? Well, Elijah, I as well am a lover of the Savage Dragon. Mm -hmm. Eric Larson is an incredible creator, writer, artist. He's the only guy who's been on his creation for this long from the very beginning mm -hmm. to right now. I believe it's issue 238 or 240. <laughs> he's done, he's written and drawn yeah. every single issue. Hats off to you, Eric Larson, for being so committed to your character and also creating so many fun adventures. I mean, if he was getting bored, he would just change it up. He was like, look, now we're in a savage land. Mm -hmm. We're in a Kirby world. Now it's Savage, uh, savage Dragon's son or people die. He would create things to keep himself interested yeah. and you, the, the reader, also interested. What are your thoughts on a Savage Dragon adaptation? Now, it was a cartoon series uh, back in yeah. the 90s, hasn't gotten its proper due. Right. I'll straight up say I would love to see a Savage Dragon television show. Oh, that'd be great. Not as a movie. I would like to see it done like, I know everyone's going to kill me by saying it, I'd like to see it done as a procedural because everyone's like, everyone mm. always says procedural. Well, guess what? It works for Daredevil. So yeah. I'm going to stick to it. Like when you have lawyers or cops, a procedural television series works. Savage Dragon is a Chicago cop. Mm. That's what I want to see. Roku. Yeah, I agree with you completely. I love Savage. Like I was all on the image train when they first started all this stuff. Savage Dragon, Stormwatch, Wildcats. I was all in it. And Savage Dragon was one of those ones that just stood out. Even Deathblow, The Max. I loved all all that stuff. So Savage Dragon was so great. And procedural is a great point, John, because you can walk the line of hard ass and smirky, uh, smart ass stuff, which is what Savage Dragon's like calling cards are. So you can work within a procedural like that. And especially in the right hands with the right show creator, you or showrunner rather, you'd have a, a fantastic show that people would get on board. I mean, uh, uh, Legion is, is a template for how far you can push the genre. Oh, yeah. So why wouldn't Savage Dragon work as a, as a procedural? Yeah, love Legion. And speaking of shows that have got to end, and this show's got to end. <laughs> You've been watching episode 106. Let me thank my guest. Campy had to bust out because he had a, a phone call, but let's go to Roka. Where can people find you online? Hey, guys, you can always find me at the Roka Says on Twitter and on Instagram. You know, every Friday is on Collider Movie Talk. And please download and listen and subscribe to my uh, uh, podcast, The Cinephiles, Cine-Files on iTunes and on Stitcher. Yeah, Cinephiles is great. You guys get into some of the really old school 70s movies and 70s. get in depth. I yep. love it. Thank you. Jeremy, where can people find you? You can find me on the Jeremy Files on the dark web. You can find me at Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy Johns on YouTube and Twitter. You can find my show Awesome Tacular on Go90, where Schnepp and I talk some comic books, and I talk a lot of other nerdy stuff with some other nerdy folks. You'd love it. Be there. Definitely, and you've been uh, you've been watching Collider Heroes. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter, just at John Schnepp. Check out my The Schnepp Zone YouTube channel. I'm starting to do my own little things, popping off different little reviews. I did a Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 on there. Subscribe to The Schnepp Zone, and I'll see you guys next week on Collider Heroes. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.